Hello everybody, Spooky Sandwoman here. Hi, I'm Jess. Again. She's eating a snack. Thank you for watching uh, Seduce Me, My Princess. So this is with Eric. I think the third one. Yes, the third one we've done. You didn't say turd, I said third. Just in case. That's a turd. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, God. Let's start. It's a tiny, it's literally the tiniest piece of like vanilla whatever. Yeah. Okay. It's like an awkward fake cream taste, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not even vanilla. I don't understand. <laughs> Whatever. It's called the Vanilla Mountain. It's supposed to be a chocolatey mountain but it's with crunchy peanuts and a creamy vanilla center. That's the fucking bottom. <laughs> it's not a center. All right. <clears throat> do you want me to do narrator? Oh, I got this. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> when you're dating someone, you expect surprises. Depending on who you're dating, the surprises can range from a new habit they may have or something that may change how you see them. When it comes to dating a demon, the possibilities become endless. This sounds like the beginning of a reality show. It's like... When you date a human, you expect all of this silly stuff. But when you're dating a demon, you expect hell. Literally. Da -da 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 -da. It's like a sitcom kind of thing, like one of those old ones. That's right. I was in love with a demon. The many surprises he showed me included him being an incubus, him having tentacle powers. I forgot about that. Tentacle porn is real. And him being an ex-noble from a large, expanding kingdom. I didn't think anything could take the cake on top of those things. Except for when he takes my cake. Off my titties. I was wrong. <laughs> oh. oh, look at that! We're in a car! I don't think the radio station 96.11 actually exists. I don't think so. I found myself dressed to the nines, sitting in my fiance's luxury car as we drove into the city of Chicago. That's weird. We I told that. you. We mentioned that. That is, oh, we're in Chicago. Is it, is it illegal? I don't think so. I don't know. I'd like to, thinking of the fireworks before. Yeah. yeah. In another video. Yeah. I didn't wear fancy clothes often, so feeling the lavish fabrics of the gown I was wearing against my skin was almost uncomfortable. What does that say? Super. It's like supervision or something. Superstition? Maybe. Unless it's superstition, because it's very superstitious! Riding down the wall. Haunted Mansion, watch it. Still, I had to admit, when I saw myself in the mirror, I was floored at how I looked. Floored. I was in a beautifully designed red and black dress with matching heels and jeweled accessories. That sounds exactly like something I would wear. I still would never know how Eric was able to obtain it all, but he gifted the gown, the shoes, and the jewelry to me with a simple smile. Well, isn't he a tailor? He would probably just make it. Maybe. A part of me knew that he had made the dress by hand. <laughs> he owned a custom suit shop and had access to the finest fabrics in the city. His skill wasn't limited to suits, however. He could make anything that was deemed as formal wear. Then why isn't it called a formal wear shop? <clears throat> as for the shoes and jewelry, I couldn't figure it out, and I decided to let it go. He's a jewel thief. Let it go. Let it go. Damn. The drive into the city became one filled with curiosity. Why did I have to be dressed up? Where exactly were we going? Eric? Yes, my princess. Oh, look at him. He's so cute. Oh, he's got gloves on. Fancy. Ooh, he's got gloves over his awkward Young. fingers. Where are we going? Oh, a chuckle escaped Eric's lips as he continued to drive into the night. He's bringing me to a... Trip club. I was going to say bondage dungeon, but sure, that works too. I That's what James is into, not him. You never know. We're taking you to get bonded by James. <laughs> and I'll watch. Creepy. A surprise that requires me to dress up like I'm going to a prom. Oh my god. Not we're going to prom. prom. Exactly. Huh? We're going to a ball. That's what we're going to. Eric. Eric's smile grew as he lowered a hand from the wheel and took a gentle hold of mine, bringing it to his lips and laying a butterfly kiss over it. Wouldn't a butterfly kiss be yeah. your, your eyelashes? I don't think so. They... He just, he just, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> as he's trying to drive. Just... 
There you go. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, I can't fucking see. I promise you will enjoy yourself. You have my word. Okay, if you say so. I stared at Eric, a small blush adorning my face at his gentle words and kiss. Giving up at last, I nodded and simply let him guide us further into the heart of the city. Chicago is a beautiful city, especially at night. Chicago! Chicago! It's a city that's inviting, it's a city that's exciting, it's a city that was just for me. The lights that illuminated the streets and buildings were a grand sight to behold. And the lively aura of the night's energy that filled every alley and sidewalk was simply enchanting. You could, you could take me out of Chicago, but you can never take the love of Chicago out of me! <laughs> to my surprise, the traffic towards our destination was almost non-existent. We were in the richest part of Chicago, and at last we arrived at our destination. One that took me completely off guard. The grocery store? <laughs> the outside looked like a regular business building. At the very top of the tower was a large sign that said, The Gateway in bright yellow colors. We're going to hell the gateway to hell. Awesome. Something about it stood out somehow, which made me curious. Wow. Who would have thunk it that it'd be in Chicago? Chicago. Chicago. Was it in store in this place? What was in store in this place? <laughs> was it in store? In store. Eric led me out of the car, opening my door for me and escorting me out with a gentle hand. As he closed the door behind me, a man dressed in a, a bellboy suit rushed up to Eric and held out his hand. Eric dug his hand in his tuxedo pocket and finally took out a small white envelope, passing it in his car keys to the bellboy. The bellboy took the items and quickly rushed to the driver's side of the car, driving it off like a valet. I you mean, I as a valet, he is a valet, <laughs> not like a valet. You don't want some random bellboy to fucking take your <laughs> expensive an car. an envelope full of money, and here are my keys. Go have a fun night. I watched as the car headed into a nearby parking lot as I unconsciously took Eric's arm. As I turned back to him, I could tell that I was in for more surprises. He handed me a mask and silently instructed me to put it on as we walked up the steps to the door. It, it fit like a glove. <laughs> Is this like a fucking masquerade ball? You're gonna lose them. A pair of bellboys opened the doors for Eric and me, revealing a lavish lobby with a single large pedestal platform in the middle of the room. Stepping up to it, we were stopped by a large woman in a dress suit. We wouldn't be able to lose him because we just have to look for the person doing the finger gun. True. Invitation. Oh, hello. <laughs> she's like one of those like really fat ones with like a hairy mole right here and she's smoking or whatever. And she has like a shit ton of necklaces. You know what I'm picturing, yeah. right? I looked at Eric, watching him take out a golden slip of paper from his pocket and pass it to the woman. The guard looked over the parchment before nodding to Eric and stepping away from our path to the pedestal. Where on earth are we going? I'm telling you we're going to hell. I'm telling you we're going to like a demon world party right now. I remained silent still as we stepped up to the platform and settled in the middle of it. Eric guiding us to stop and stay still in place. Eric nodded to the guard who simply nodded back and waved her hand in the air. As she did, the pedestal beneath us suddenly shifted and began to rise into the air. Oh god, they're gonna crush us. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> I gripped Eric tightly as the platform beneath us ascended through the building. All around us were sights of pictures and diamond chandeliers. I'm gonna <laughs> swing from the chandelier! I won't continue. Whatever this was, I could tell that this was by no means a regular event. It's a suicide party. You jump off the pedestal. Cool. We'll be together forever in the afterlife. When we reached the top floor, or what I assumed to be the top floor, we were greeted by a pair of women in waitress suits, bowing to us in respect. As their bird tail feathers and pure black eyes presented themselves to me, I knew that this was a demon party. You're right. <laughs> the doors opened to a large ballroom, one that definitely didn't seem to fit inside a suite room. 
All around were couples and groups mingling and dancing elegantly to the sound of Victorian-style orchestral music. I was astonished. Even as I was led in by Eric, everyone was dressed in modern formal wear with a range of dresses and tuxedos. It was almost dizzying. Is that even a word? Yeah. yeah. How much the aged music clashed with the modern fashion of the patrons. Yeah, I couldn't tear my eyes away from the sight of the guests. Wow. Welcome to a small taste of the demon world, my princess. The guests were all demons, some with horns, some with tails, and the rest with an assortment of different looks. It was a conglomerate of people, and I felt a bit out of place as someone who looked obviously human. Well, so does an Eric. I mean, he's not in his demon form. Unless he's gonna, like, fucking... <laughs> yeah, be like... Yeah! He, he goes Hulk. <laughs> and his Everybody fucking tentacles. Hand. He's like, let's add a hand. Shall we dance? And then tentacles, tentacles. <laughs> As we step further into the space, a voice chirped out. Eric, my boy, come fly over here, will you? I'm not sure I'm okay with this. Uh, I looked over to see a bird man. Birdman with a polished tuxedo wave over. <laughs> no, I can't. I, this, no. No. I mean, he has nice hair. Actually, his hair kind of looks like Tara from Birth by Sleep. I don't, I don't think you know what that is. It's a Kingdom Hearts game. It, <sighs> Very handsome gentleman with mouse ears on his arm. Despite the nerves running through my system, Eric and I walked over. As Eric bowed his head, I quickly curtsied. That is not in a, a, a handsome gentleman with mouse ears. He looks like a character from Arthur. He's actually an Ardberg. He's not a mouse. For some reason, the way the birdman carried himself made him seem like a prince. I was in awe of his gorgeous tail feathers and beak, as accented by the lavish suit he wore. Connor, Every time I hear you bird, look oh. Connor. I assume you approve of your tuxedo? Approve? I absolutely love it! Ricardo here won't let go of me because of it. <laughs> I looked over at the mouse man, who I assumed to be Ricardo, as he smiled coyly and hugged Connor's arm tight, nodding in agreement of Connor's words. I smiled a bit as Eric laughed. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you for inviting us to your anniversary celebration. It is an honor to be in such company. I'm very confused. I don't know what's going on. Nonsense. Thank you for attending. As the son of the most powerful demon in the Abyssal Plains, it's only proper to invite you regardless. My only regret is not inviting your brothers. I must seem so rude. Eric waved his hand dismissively. Think nothing of it. We actually denounced our titles when we came to this world. You don't say. Well, good on you. You do such fabulous work as a designer here. It's no wonder that your suit shop is unmatched. Connor finally turned his gaze to me and cocked it in curiosity. He felt a bit small under his gaze, but smiled respectfully back. How do we know if he smiles? He's got a beak. Does he just go, ah? <laughs> and who might this lovely lady be? A human? Ah, I'm a fiance. Hoi. 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 Tam. Hoi, Tam. Eric nodded and lifted my hand to his lips, kissing it respectfully before our conversation partners. This is my wonderful princess. I asked her to accompany me tonight to show her how elegant a demon ball can be. I mean, you didn't tell me what the I was fuck you were doing. I was 100% correct, demon ball. How marvelous! I rarely get to meet humans. It is an absolute delight to meet you. You're not even looking at us. Connor held out his hand towards me. Does his hands have feathers too? His hands are... Like, his fingers are just, like, feathery. Ew. It's like the Grinch, but with feathers. Yeah. That'd be so awkward. Held out his hand towards me, making me place my hand in it out of manners. Instead of kissing my hand, he lifted it to his beak and very gently nipped a couple times at the back of it, making me giggle a bit. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you, too, you fucking... As you have, like, a huge pe... <laughs> This is what happens when he nips your ah! hand. Don't let him. Don't let him. He rips off skin. Connor, 
Mm, you taste wonderful. <laughs> Connor released my hand and smiled at me before looking back at Eric. Well, Eric, princess, it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you. Please enjoy the ball. Dance and eat as much as you like. We shall. Thank you. With that, Eric and I walked away from Connor and Ricardo, both of whom were waving at us before turning to find new conversation partners. So this is a demon ball. Yes, princess. You've been curious about what life was like for me in the demon world, yes? I nodded. I was indeed curious about Eric's life in the demon world, but I didn't expect him to give me an experience. This was completely out of the blue. Eric gestured to the room, where the couples on the dance floor were waltzing in sync. It was mesmerizing. Well, this is a perfect representation of how a demon royal celebrated. We had elegant balls filled with dancing and food, and they would only end when the sun came up. That's too long for me. I go to bed at like nine. Really? I thought the demon world was like the dark ages. This seems like a fairy tale ball, not really medieval. Eric chuckled and walked with me around the dance floor, continuing his explanation. <laughs> the demon world may be stuck in the dark ages, but we do take inspiration from the human world. Your fairy tales inspired our celebrations. All right. Oh. Mm. I couldn't stop staring at the dancers and the demons in the room. There were so many people dressed up like royalty that I felt almost underdressed. There were some glances my way, but none with ill intent. I wish you could see what we're actually wearing in the corner, like the first game. Yeah. It was probably natural, since I was a human in a room full of demons. Slyly, Eric led me onto the dance floor and began to waltz with me to the music. We remained outside of the crowd, dancing to our own beat and sways as the rest of the dancers kept in time and stepped with the synchronized dancing. So, instead of getting phones and computers, you got balls and dresses. Ha! <laughs> you are correct. The demon world has no need for computers or phones, but new traditions of celebration are always welcomed. No raves or clubs. Too human for our tastes. No light shows or DJs. That would require electricity, my princess, which we don't care to use. Or to Amish. Us, it's a waste of energy. <laughs> the true demons. <laughs> the true demons of the world. The Amish. <laughs> I burst my lips at Eric as he slowly began to ease us into the crowd. I barely noticed the dancers moving alongside. Ugh, I said alongside, but aside. And stopping their dances to stare at us as I locked eyes with Eric, continuing the conversation. Do demons have balls often? Ha. Testicles. Unfortunately, no. Hosting it's celebrations tentacles. take a large amount of resources. Tennis so balls. balls for only the <laughs> Poor <most> lady! I'm glad we're on the same thing. <laughs> SpongeBob. Like, birthdays? Demons don't celebrate birthdays, princess. However... We celebrate the peaceful uniting of kingdoms, or the crowning of a new ruler. I became fascinated, even as Eric began to twirl me around and add elaborate steps into the dance between us. We both focused on each other as we let the world around us fade into a blurred outline of people and decor. However, the human world has provided demons here the means to celebrate many more things. Like Connor's anniversary. Eric nodded and dipped me for a moment, staring deep into my eyes. Exactly. Oh shit. Look at that. That's nice. That's a nice, that's a nice picture. I held on to Eric mesmerized in his lovely purple eyes. What? They're supposed to be red, I thought. What a fucking animal. Yeah. I squeezed his hand gently and caused him to lift me back up and hold me close in a loving embrace. And one day. Would love to hold an elegant ball for our union. Well, we're already engaged, so this doesn't feel like much of an impact on me. Eric! My face began to glow a soft rosy red as I smiled up at my prince. I loved him with every ounce of my being, and a fairy tale wedding and a ball seemed like a perfect way to celebrate. I stretched up on my toes and kissed Eric ever so slightly. Slightly. Yup, slightly. Gently, before pulling away with an eagle. <laughs> Just, I would love yeah. that. Just <laughs> barely just... Yep. It's just like... <laughs> 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 Eric stared at me in surprise for a moment before chuckling and nuzzling his head against mine, a playful but loving smirk against his lips. And this is the moment where he gets hungry and we have to go to the uh, the closet so he can feed. And also have sex. That's why his eyes are purple! 
My beautiful princess, I am yours forever. And scene. And I'm yours, my prince charming. And the night became one fairy tale dancing and seemingly happy ever after for me and my demon friends. And that's it. Wow, that was kind of abrupt. Yeah, yeah, literally. That was kind of just like a, okay, you're done. Bye. Well, that was Seduce Me, My Princess, where we were the princess and Eric was not the princess. Um, that was cute. Yeah. It kind of felt like a lot of lead up to very yeah. little climax. But I ha. liked it nonetheless. Ha. <laughs> Two different climaxes. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share with your friends if they like Connor and Ricardo, your new OTP. Bye-bye.